Oregon State press conference in five minutes. Five minutes at 9.15. Donovan and Talia. Donovan and Talia are coming.
Good morning, media, and welcome to our first press conference of the day. We are joined by Oregon State coach Scott Ruick. Scott, congratulations and good morning. Thank you. Good we'll morning. open it right up for questions at this time, and we'll start in the front. Good morning, Scott. Doug Farmer with the AP. I'm guessing you've watched some of South Carolina's tape, if not live yesterday also. What's your impressions of them and what you're going to need to do to, to keep on advancing? Take care of the ball. No, I'm just um, – they're excellent. I mean, it's not the first time we've seen them, of course. We've scouted them throughout the week, should we have had won, you know, so we'd be prepared. And, you know, as you look at them, you, you, they're undefeated for a reason. Uh, there's not a lot of weakness, you know, out there. And so uh, very well coached, experienced coach, and they've got a little bit of everything. And, and so you got to, I mean, you got an inside presence like that, and then you've got a perimeter presence. You've got a defensive presence. Um, you know, and then everything you do kind of just makes sense, you know, and go into your strengths all game long. And so they're an excellent team. And so for us, um, we've got to do what we do, and we've got to do it at an extremely high level, you know. And, um, you know, it's, it's – you get here, rebounding's a big deal, um, you know, and being so tight defensively. Um, and making them miss, you know, and slow them, slowing them down. And so just like yesterday, um, you know, we looked at s turnovers were the, the talk after the game, you know, I think um, equally as important were making shots um, and making them miss and rebounding, you know. And so turnovers in the first half yesterday led to transition. Second half, the mistakes didn't. Um, you know, they were dead ball. Um, you know, that type of thing. And so making this a, a five on five game for us on the defensive end of the floor is going to be very important. Hey, Coach Brett Taylor, KZI 9 Brett. Sports. Morning. Talia said at the beginning of the March Madness tournament that she wanted the team to treat every team that you guys face, like South Carolina. You guys obviously face them tomorrow, knowing how good that they are and the level of competition you guys have faced this season. Do you believe this may be the toughest challenge your team has faced so far this year? It would make sense that it is, you know, I, I think, um, you know, our conference was a beast this year, you know, um, this team, it's so hard to compare, um, you know, but I, I would say, yeah, I mean, this is, this is the number one ranked team in the country. This is an undefeated team that survived every battle, every test so far. And, um, you know, we're looking to be the first team to beat them, you know, and so, uh, I would say, yeah, uh, they're, they're long, they're athletic, um, take care of the ball really well, and shoot it really well. You know, and I think that's the, that's the thing that probably is the separator for them, um, is their ability to knock threes down. You know, uh, we played them in the tournament. It's always like uh, South Carolina seems to always be in our region, um, you know. And, uh, and so this is the third time, I think, we will have faced them in the tournament. Um, you know, in the previous two times, I remember going into those games. Uh, we played them one other time. Um, the previous three times, I guess I should say then, I remember, you know, looking at it, the defensive game plan and going, okay, we can help in off that. We can help in off that. Uh, we can provide help in the post off that. This team, where do you help? You know, and that, that's what is separating this team, um, in my opinion. Scott, uh, good morning. Howard good morning. Mardell from the Next. Uh, a couple things, if I could. The first, just um, you've obviously been in this position before, not just in the Elite Eight, but even in the tournament facing, <clears throat> excuse me, an undefeated team uh, the way you did back in, you know, 2016. Mm -hmm. How is this challenge different, and how do you get the opportunity to kind of learn from that game as you go into this one uh, tomorrow? Yeah, so you're referring to UConn, um, yeah, in 2016. And, you know, that was a pro team. Um, I mean, they had the entire roster was a first round draft pick, you know, and, and it's Brianna Stewart's fourth, you know, national championship. And so um, looking back on that, that's interesting. Um, looking back on that, probably um, remaining more of who we are in it. That team stretched you in so many ways. Um, they scored so easily from everywhere. This team is, is similar. And so um, you, you have to commit 
everything you've got to protecting the rim. There's no question. I mean, that is where the game is won. Um, but not compromising maybe as much, you know, in the approach. On the other end of the floor, you got to knock shots down, bottom line. You know, and Indiana showed that yesterday, you know, in hitting 13 threes or 12, 12 or 13 threes. And so, um, you know, so the offensive game, you've got to be tight. You've got to hit everything on time. And, you know, you've got to be ready to make shots from the, from the, from the jump. And so, I, so I think those two things, you know, just making sure uh, we're aggressive offensively and, and probably being just more of who we are you know, on, on the defensive end of the floor. I'm sorry, and just to the second part of it is, you know, in so many ways, this has been a program you have built, you have sort of imagined in a way that I think a lot of people didn't necessarily think Oregon State could become. And I just wonder, as you're heading to obviously a huge transition, how important it was to have this run happen now and with such a young team as you're trying to conceive of where this program goes next. Yeah. Um, it's a good question. Just uh, the outside circumstances have not impacted my mindset or my expectation of what we should and can and will do. Um, those are they they alter maybe the strategy within it, but they don't change what we're here to accomplish. And you know, I get to coach at my school. Uh, it's a dreamy situation for me and it always has been. And I like uh, doing things that people don't think are possible. And um, nobody thought Oregon State could win. You know, and so in my old school, nobody thought George Fox could win. You know, and so I've been living this for 28 years now, and it's a lot of fun. And so I, I intend to continue to have fun in that and compete at the highest level and, um, you know, make people ask me questions like you just did. You know, how is that possible and, and what are you going to continue to do and how are you going to do it? And, you know, we love our players, bottom line. We coach and we make pros um, and we find ways to win games some people don't think we could. And, and that's the, the joy of this because ultimately all you're doing is helping your student um, see themselves different. And that's a transformational experience um, for them. And that's where the joy in all of this is for me. Andrea Adelson with ESPN. Scott, as a follow-up to that, considering what the transfer portal is and where you're going to be playing next season, do you have fears, concerns that there will be folks who try to come after your players because you do have such a young team and say, well, you're not in a Power 5 conference anymore. Mm -hmm. Why are you still there? Come play for my Power 5 conference. I'm wondering mm -hmm. if that's kind of gone mm -hmm. through your mind through this as well. Well, I mean, that would be logical. You know, that, that is the logic, um, you know, that that's that's reality you know it, and so within it to counter that you know what strategies do we use to counter that I mean I think that's a on an individual basis um, and so yeah that's that's a thing for sure um, within that I can't control that other than just keep doing what I'm doing you know so as far as worrying as far as all those things that that I could spend my time doing um, I think I just, you know, it just lays the blueprint for how you operate. But within this entire transfer world, you know, I was scared of it at the beginning. Um, we had very few transfers until COVID happened. And when COVID happened and our worlds all changed, and especially on the West Coast, the world changed extreme, at an extreme level, um, we ended up having transfers. And all of a sudden, it was like a different experience for me, for everyone. And I, I was scared of it at the beginning. I can't say that I still am there. Um, you know, I think the opportunity within that for a leader is it provides a discipline that you better be on your A game all the time. You know, you better take care of people and you better provide a great experience. You know, otherwise you are susceptible to the things that you just mentioned. You know, and certainly there's certain things out of our control. You know, COVID was out of our control and that caused a lot of disruption. Um, within that, I just made sure we were doing our very best, you know, within it. And so I think that's the approach going forward and what happens happens and then we'll find a way. Um, nobody expected us to be here after the transfers that happened a couple years ago, you know, and, and uh, um, you know, God provides, you know, and it's just staying faithful and true and, um, 
you know, being yourself within it and being the best version of yourself within it. Nicole Auerbach, oh, oh. The Athletic. Scott, um, okay. you've been in this phase before this short turnaround, the second weekend. You've gotten through it. How challenging is this particular to go from the Sweet 16 to the Elite Eight, with the chance to get to a Final Four that just dangling kind of right there? Mm -hmm. Like, just how does this feel? How do you prepare? How challenging is this moment? Yeah, um, I love it. I mean, that's, that's what I'd say. I mean, this is what we all do this for, you know. Uh, this is a little earlier today than, than I would have chosen, um, you know. And so the, this added to the challenge a little bit, um, you know, just the timing of things and playing at one tomorrow is, is a, a little earlier than I would have chosen uh, for preparation and all those things. However, um, you know, that's, that's what we do. And so find a way. And, and um, so I'm, this is living the dream. This is what we all do this for, you know, and so pushing the right buttons at the right time and making sure, you know, every syllable is the right syllable or the best you can do, um, making sure the team is in the right place, seeing the right things, um, all those things is, that's the joy in, in this entire process. So I would say it's extremely challenging, um, but of course it is, uh, it's beautiful. Uh, Nick Dashel from the Oregonian. Um, Scott, how did you develop your philosophy of, on defense of position over, say, pressuring the ball and going after steals? And then what's, what's the process like of the buy-in beyond you know, playing time? How do you get players to buy into this? Okay. Um, well, I'd, I'd say defensive philosophy, as, as you're building the system, I mean, I, I like winning, and I like to win the biggest games. And... I like, I've, I've cut some nets, I like cutting nets, hanging banners, and I like lots of smiles on lots of faces um, because of it. That means you have to beat the best team. The best teams typically don't turn it over much. The best teams are going to get the ball to their scores. The best teams are going to, you know, um, defend you very well, all those things. So when you build a system, um, I mean, if you notice uh, over the years, UConn hasn't pressed much. Um, that doesn't mean they don't get steals. Uh, Stanford hasn't pressed much. You wouldn't call them pressure teams. Um, but, man, you feel pressure when you play against them. And I would say I think Notre Dame play, felt pressure yesterday. Down the stretch, they were going to the wrong hand. They were doing different things. They had to shoot and make shots over the top of us all day. And they shot a poor percentage because of it. Um, we had rebounding position because of it. And so why has Oregon State beaten Baylor over the years? Why have we had the wins that we've had over the years to get to these spots? Um, I would say it's that philosophy that has given us a chance when we typically have not been the most athletic team on the floor. And um, so it's just evolved over time, you know, in that desire to beat the very best and what it would take. And so while we not, might not beat uh, an average team by as many points as others, uh, We'll still win that game, but we'll have a chance in this game. And so that's, that's why I've chosen that. As far as the buy-in, um, I think it's communication. I think it's trust. I think it's um, an understanding of what we're trying to accomplish and a realistic approach to where each person is, you know, and honest conversations um, within that that, um, you know, builds the trust necessary to handle maybe a tough situation. Like, why didn't I play tonight? Well, I got to trust the coaches that, that they made the best decisions for our team, you know, and so we do, you know, I, I hope that we are always on the same page with that as best we can be, you know, and I know it's, that's, that's every coach's challenge. Okay, this has to be last one right here. Hey, Coach T. Baker with the next, um, just about uh, Donovan, really gifted freshman, but this is a big high pressure moment. How do you prepare a young guard like that to play in such a high stakes environment? Yeah, um, I mean, that's, that's the fun of this season in many ways, is bringing this team that's reliant on young players along. I have a lot of experience in my past over about um, with first year players playing in big games and big moments and <clears throat> expecting them to operate like a junior or a senior. Um, you know, and I think, why not? I mean, you've been playing this game a long time. Certainly, certain, you know, exterior environments will change, but it's still a game on the floor, you know. Um, that you've been playing forever and so and this is a year of your life why wait till your sophomore junior senior year you know to perform 
um, we can get you there, you know. And so I think a lot of it's trust and a lot of it is, you know, our staff doing a great job and in, in the trenches day after day, you know, minute by minute, um, bringing them along. It's the teammates and the upperclassmen accepting them and building their confidence and telling them they can do it and, and showing them the way. And then for me, it's doing everything I can to steer them to success and out of mistakes and out of failure, which I think coaches can do. Um, you know, is to help them minimize mistakes. And so uh, um, it's, it's one of the things I've really, I, I really enjoy that, that part of it. You know, it's like, yeah, you're a freshman, but eh, you're only a freshman for a little while. You're, not, you're no longer a freshman. And so um, play confident, play poised, and be you. Coach, thank you very much yeah. for your time this morning. Thank you. We'll be joined by the student athletes in a few moments. Welcome back. We will now take questions for our student athletes, Donovan Hunter and Talia von Olhoffen. Start here. Uh, Doug Feinberg, DAP. Talia, what, when you see South Carolina on film and in person, mm -hmm. most impresses you about them and what you guys need to do tomorrow to come away with another victory? Yeah, I think just um, how fast and how hard they play on both ends of the floor, I think. Slowing them down in transition is definitely going to be a key. Um, and then obviously they have a huge inside presence and um, she's the real deal. So, um, you know, we've been working against posts like that all year and, and um, have prided ourselves on being able to defend one on one in there. And so um, that's what it's going to come down to. But um, and then obviously their defensive pressure is um, outstanding. And that's who Don Staley is as a coach and um, all of her teams play that way. And so. Um, obviously, turnovers were a problem for us yesterday, so we're going to have to take care of the ball and, and handle the pressure. But I think if we do that, we can get the shots we want. And so it's just going to come down to hitting shots. Oh. Hey, guys. Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. Um, Scott seems to be a very level person, like not too high, not too low. I'm curious how that impacts the team. And also, what was he like as a recruiter? And what was it about him or Oregon State? I know you're Pacific Northwesterners, but that made you want to play for him. Yeah, um, I mean, he is very um, level-headed. And I think when it comes to games, especially this deep into the season, postseason, um, it takes a lot of, you know, making sure that you keep your team calm. Because at the end of the day, you can't really control foul calls or any of that. So to have a coach that looks at you guys and, you know, calms you guys down or calms us down um, helps a lot. Um, and then the recruiting process, he made sure that he was really focused in on us outside of basketball. And I think that's a huge part because, you know, sports, um, People only think of athletes um, as us on the court um, rather than us as individuals a lot of the time. So he really focused in on that. Um, and I think that helps us build a piece of trust with him when it comes to being on the court. Yeah, and I think, um, I don't want to use the word calculated, but I think there's a reason for everything he does. And especially yesterday with, with all the turnovers, I think it would have been really easy for him to you know, be on us or um, you know, get upset about that. And, um, you know, react however, but um, I think he knew that just 
we're a young group and, and in that game that's not what we needed from him and so he was very level headed and um, just took the approach of, of encouraging and problem solving and I think that kept us calm in other areas of the game. Our defense, our rebounding was incredible and um, it's easy to talk about the turnovers after the game but to be able to turn the ball over like that and still win means you're doing everything else really well. And so I think um, how level-headed he was kind of kept us all calm and able to lock in on other aspects of the game. And so I think he knew that, and I think that's something that he really thinks about, um, you know, in, in ways in those moments. And so um, that's just someone that's been doing this a long time and um, is extremely intelligent. Um, and so, yeah, it's everything for us. Uh, Nicole Auerbach, The Athletic, for, for both of you. Um, you know, Scott's talked about the young team and, and the joy in watching you guys come together. Uh, I'm wondering if there were like specific moments or specific even off the, off the court moments over the course of this season or last off season where you guys felt that, like specific uh, instances where you could see that the team was, was gelling. I mean, as a freshman myself, you know, feeling the new experiences and everything being a first um, throughout this whole entire season, um, there's of course moments. I mean. The turnovers that we've had, um, obviously not great, um, but that just does come from, and I'm speaking on my own turnovers, um, first time, first experience, you're learning things, and in order to grow, you got to make those mistakes. Um, so I think there's obviously really good moments, and then moments where it's like, of course, we're young and we're learning, um, but throughout the season, especially with the Pac-12 conference, um, we've been able to grow with each game we've had. So. I mean, even though it's showing now, I would say postseason, it's less um, about us being young. And now it's just we're also a team that can compete with anyone. Oh, I was yeah, just going to say, I think um, going off the court, um, talking about going to Italy and how um, we talk about it a lot in press conferences and in answers, but it really was so important for this team to gel and um, be around each other so much in a Obviously, we were playing basketball over there, but you're you're off the court most of the time. You know, you're going to dinners, doing things like that, and so I think that's when we all got really close. And then that was in August. So then you go into football season, and we're going to all the football games together. We're tailgating, and um, we're just super close. And then um, you know, that's all fall, all preseason, and then it just carries us through to where we are now. And um, this group is just so tight knit, and um, I think our chemistry off the court is is evident on the court and. Um, we play that way, and it's just been so critical in our success this year. Howard Mendel at the Net, congratulations to you both. Thank uh, you. A question for each of you, but a bit different. Uh, Donovan, Scott talked about the fact that in, uh, he doesn't see freshmen as freshmen, especially at this point in the year, and I'm wondering to what extent it felt like you were not a freshman out on the court yesterday. And uh, Talia, for, for you, this is such a young team, you as a veteran presence, I'm just wondering the way in which you uh, use leadership. Are you a talker? Are you looking mm -hmm. to lead by example? Just if you could tell me about the ways in which you do so. Donovan, who wants to start? Yeah, um, I mean, at this point, he's right. Um, whether you're a freshman at, at this point, that's not an excuse to, you know, even if I make a mistake to be like, oh, I'm just a freshman, it's my first time. Um, we're so deep into the season that any mistake I make, that's just, self-inflicted um, but I mean there's so many moments especially with her leadership by my side um, you know she played point guard last year um, so she knows the ins and outs of that and the, not necessarily the pressure but the duties that require um, the point guard position so having her guide me helps me grow so much more to the point where now it's no longer I'm a freshman um, so I would say a lot of the moments within the game really just the support that the team gives me um, to where yeah, being a freshman is no longer an excuse. And um, being able to execute the plays for my team, I would say, you know, signifies that I'm no longer a freshman, that I'm a point guard. Aaliyah? Yeah, and I think uh, my leadership style, um, I think just communicating on both ends, and I know everyone does that, but, you know, in the huddles, what I'm saying, and obviously with the young group, you know, there are situations I've been in um, or I've experienced or mistakes that I've made um, that, you know, I can kind of help them get ahead of or, or see what they're doing. And, um, you know, I know our defense and our offense one through five. I can run every play at every position. So even just um, some of our young players, like Dom specifically, she's, she's played one through four for us this year. So it's hard to know, you know, all the plays and sets that we have from so many positions. So even just helping with play calls and, um, you know, when Donovan's getting pressure to make sure everyone knows what we're in. And 
um, our rotations. If someone misses a rotation, like I'm very vocal about, you know, just getting everyone on the same page and making sure that um, we're holding each other accountable. And that's what I love about this team is I'm definitely one that's holding everyone accountable, but I make sure that they know that if I make a mistake or if I'm not doing something, like I want to hear it from them too. So we have that kind of um, back and forth. And I think that's also played a huge role. And now we ho all hold each other accountable. I don't remember what it was, but Donovan got on me during the game yesterday for something. And I was like, yeah, shoot. Like, I had, like a freshman should not be telling me that I'm making this mistake right now. And, um, you know, that's the beauty of this team, that you can have that. And like you said, she's not a freshman. And um, she she's, sees things so much quicker now. And um, there's kind of a, a balance, you know, to start the year. You have to understand that she is a freshman and she is learning. I could have been in her ear a lot more than I was because I've I see the mistakes um, that could happen because I made them myself. And so I have a lot to say, but you know, there's, there's a balance because some of it you just have to, you just have to go through and that's how you learn. Um, but I think, yeah, I've just been in this program specifically a long time. And so I know the system from every position. And so um, just making sure I'm saying the right things at the right time. And I think late game situations is where I've really grown in making sure, you know, we know the foul count, we know how many timeouts we have. All those little things I pride myself on. Um, so I would definitely say kind of coach on the floor is, is my style of leadership. Uh, Andrea Adelson with ESPN. I asked your coach this question too. With such a young team and knowing what the future holds for you guys and, and playing in a new conference, I'm wondering if you've thought about or have fears and concerns about trying to keep this team together, knowing what the portal is and there may be teams that try and come after players and say, well, you're not in a Power 5 conference anymore, come play for us, for both? Um, I think we haven't talked about that or thought about it this year. I know I haven't. Um, we had a great opportunity in the Pac-12 this year, and that's um, been what the conversation has been. That's what I've told the team is, um, you know, during the season, we're playing for a Pac-12 championship. So all that other talk about conference realignment, all of that, it's going to be a conversation after the season for sure, and um, the, f the future is uncertain in that regard. But you know, we, we can only control what we can control, and our focus is on this season and this year. Um, and so I'm sure there will be questions after the season, and it's definitely going to be something that needs to be addressed and talked about just because we don't know what next year is going to look like. But this group has been so good about just staying present and taking games one possession at a time, one game at a time. And when you're doing that, then um, you know, conference realignment, the portal, all of that, it's, it's not a factor. And so I think even though we are young, we've been very mature in our approach to handling that. Um, all of us have. And so um, I think that's been really impressive and important um, because there is so much noise and, you know, media, all of that surrounding it. But um, it hasn't been a factor and we've controlled what we can control and it's got us really far. Yeah, I mean, to piggyback off that, um, to get this deep into the season, you have to truly be focused in on the now and the present. Um, so our team hasn't thought about any of that stuff because um, we've got lots of things to focus on. Um, practice soon today, later today. Um, so we're really just focused on the present. Uh, Nicole Auerbach, The Athletic. Uh, Talia, this is for you. Um, you tweeted, where do we submit our application to be America's team? Let's go. Um, <laughs> so make the case. Let's, let's hear it. Oh, we just made a TikTok about this. So stay tuned for our real application. Um, but no, I just think um, there's so many big names in women's basketball and um, names that you see repeatedly in the media. And they're great players, and they should be talked about. But I think. Um, you know, I don't know what the numbers are for media coverage, but we haven't been talked about a lot. We've been on the Pac-12 network all year. A lot, of, a lot of people haven't had the opportunity to watch our team. And so to be on this stage now, um, you know, I had people texting me that, that Notre Dame was talked about all game. And so little things like that drive us, but it's just this team plays so together and we're so unselfish and we love each other so much. And um, that might not get views, that might not get clicks, that might not be a headline that pulls everyone in, but it wins games and it's important in between the lines. And so, um, I don't know, I just think the so, team is so incredible and so special. And so um, we might not have the big names in the commercials and TikTok stars yet. We're trying, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I think that that's all that means is just we're America's team, we're selfless, uh, we play together, we're a family. And, um, you know, that, that's a story, that's a headline that, that I can get behind and I think a lot of people should too.
we'll be back after these messages, or can we wrap it? Thank you. Thank you, student <laughs> athletes. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Thank you. Go Beavs. Go Beavs. <laughs>
Media reminder, we'll start with the South Carolina press conference at the bottom of the hour. Approximately six minutes, 10.30, 10.30. Thank you. Can I ask for a favor, if, if it's possible? Can we move this microphone closer that way? Yeah, that one's so, not a play, right? Sure. Yeah, that's not a play. Yeah, camera's good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. A reminder, please turn off those cell phones. Thank you. And also, flash photography is prohibited. And as a reminder, as always, prior to asking the question, please identify yourself and your media affiliation. We will begin shortly. Good morning, and we are joined by South Carolina Coach Don Staley. Coach, good morning. Good morning. And we'll open it right up for questions. Start right here. Hey, Judy. Good morning, Coach. Doug Feinberg, the AP. I'm curious, how much at this time of the year do you try to fix things from yesterday that didn't go well versus, okay, that's done, let's focus on next game, so to speak? Um, if there's some similarities, we try to fix it. There's some similarities in um, how our fours have to defend um, the three-point the three-point uh, line. Um, but you know, at this point, it's about just being able to play to the habits that you've created all season long. And when they go a wire, you're you're just trying to, in real time, make adjustments. And and that's what it's about at at, at this stage of the game. So not a whole lot of screaming or yelling, just kind of showing them what what we need to do. Um, I think I think they know. I think their this moment will allow them to um, just rely on those habits. Thank you so much, um, Coach Saley, Judy Gatson from WIS TV in Columbia. I actually have a question for you from one of the fans, Forrest Alton, who says you have five new starters, a rebuilding year, according to some. Nobody could have predicted you would have been undefeated in the Elite Eight, but here we are, including when, me. <laughs> when did you know that this team was special? Is there a particular game or moment that you remember? Um. I don't I don't know. I don't I don't allow this team to take me to categories because I just stay in real time with them. Um because if you categorize them it's hard. I mean it's hard. They're I I would say their competitiveness and practice is what really um allowed me to go to a place where I knew that if that they don't like to lose, and I, I have to credit our our male practice squad, the highlighters. Like the highlighters are really, really, really good, and although um, a lot of times they they beat us in practice, a lot of times they beat us. Um, so it, it makes it easier when we're able to just just come out and, and play our, our competition because the highlight is no matter no matter what the speed of our opponents are, um, they're much quicker. They they do it at a much faster pace. So they've allowed us to kind of see the game a little slower if if teams aren't as quick as our highlighters. So it's more about practice and preparation. Um, and obviously we're getting the results from that preparation. Uh, Coach Peyton Stite, 
Peyton Titus from the state newspaper. Uh, you talked yesterday about seeing in Raven's eyes that she wasn't going to let y'all lose that game. And there have been other players, too, who had clutch moments like Bree and Camilla in close games. Does this team seem to have kind of a clutch gene, or do you think that sells the preparation short? Um, I, I think it's, um, it's the competitive piece. Um, like, they, they don't want to lose. And they have an uncanny way of figuring it out. Um, player by player, like you, and they don't, they're not phased by losing a 22 point lead um, or going down double digits. They're not phased by it. Um, it's, it's unbelievable to, to see how they handle adverse situations all season long. So it's more about the character of this team than, than you know, just pointing out a, a player having a good game and um, meeting the moment. So it's, it's it's been a little bit of everybody. So it's the fabric of what they've created. Uh, David Glodiger, Post and Courier. Uh, Dawn, you, you've had Malaysia now for close to a full year. How do you like her ability to bounce back after maybe her not usual uh, performance? Because you know, yesterday didn't didn't go so well. Just how have you seen her respond from bad games previously? Yeah, she she was due though. She was due because she's she's been playing at a really high level. And you know, people they scheme, um, and I, I I do think Lay Lay makes bad shots. <laughs> so when you when you make bad shots, you know you create this. You create like I can I can take and make any shot, and sometimes when her bad shots don't go in, um, it creates a disadvantage on the other end. Um, but we live with it. I mean, she's hit so many bad shots, and she's actually opened the game up for us. So we'll. We have to take those hits. Um, she'll have to learn, um, but her, her bounce back game is, is 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 pretty incredible. So I'm looking forward to see how she um, comes out against Oregon State. She was really she was great in practice. I think she's got that you know that spark in her eye, knowing that she wants to come out and play well. Hey, Dawn. Good morning, Howard Maddow at the next. Um, during the SEC tournament, <clears throat> there were a lot of uh, questions uh, celebrating you guys, and you talked about, you know, gee, 50-50 games, then I was going to go our way. And yesterday, we were asking a lot of questions, talking about big moments your players came through, and you said, you know, ah, we blew a 20-point lead. And I, I use that as preface to say, is that a message for your team? Is that a message that you're uh, trying to communicate? Or is there just, like, legitimate things you are worried about, uh, even during the team, you know, during the season where you've been undefeated and better than you were last year? Yeah, I'm, I'm worried every day, every day, every single day. I mean, they're they're still very young, and they've they've had young moments, they've had mature moments, um, they've had you know questionable mom moments. Um, but but we sit here where we are, um, and I I don't lose sight of not giving them the credit that they deserve being in this place. There, we're a really good basketball team that that can have some moments. Um, so it, it's more for them, it's more for everybody to to understand that that we're young. And I, I don't – Indiana's a seasoned basketball team. Like, like I was afraid of the experience that we're, they were bringing into the game. Um, we we're fortunate enough to just, you know, get out to a big lead and, and a cushion, so to speak. But – Again, our, our team sometimes, when we have a, a cushion like that, we could take it to another level. We can open it up to 30 and 40, um, or we can lose it and, and take it down to 10 or, or lose the lead. And um, but they're again, they're never phased by it. But uh, we 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 call it this. We, we I mean, even our coaches were like, you, "Are you drinking the Kool Aid?" And a lot of times we're saying we're sipping, but we're not going to take a full gulp <laughs> as to how good this team is. Nance Hammer, USA Today Sports. Don, Raven talked yesterday about not not wanting to lose, not wanting to be, you know, anyone be able to sag off like they did last year. How has her game and her mindset changed last year? And is there any one point that you can pinpoint where you saw a change or where you saw that she had – that she'd really kind of, you know, changed her, her mindset? Well, I, I think with Raven, it's, it's more of um, 
she's outwardly saying it. And she's not one that outwardly speaks about things like that. So obviously it, it hurt her. There, there's pain behind um, what she's saying, but um, she replaced it with work ethic and getting in the gym and trying to dispel that. Because, I mean, it was, it was an embarrassing moment for her. Um, and all of social media, and they're young. They're into social media. Um, so it was an embarrassing moment. But, again, she was 50% from the floor. She was three for six in the game. So um, I just want her to replace all of that with your 50% from three. Um, if you can be 50% from three, you're going to increase our chances of winning basketball games. So I think she's just growing up and maturing and, and finding her voice through an adverse situation. Hey, Coach Brett Taylor with KZ9 Sports in the back. This will be the third time you guys have faced Oregon State in the March Madness tournament. Coach Rue kind of joked about it. Every time it seems like they make it to the tournament, they seem to face you guys. What's it like facing an Oregon State squad led by Coach Rurik, and what do you recall from the first two meetings in the March Madness tournament that you might take into this game tomorrow? Um, well coached, real um, calculating and disciplined to plan the style of play that they want, real just discipline. Um, I mean, they they slow the game down at a at a at a pace that if you're if you don't stay engaged, they're going to make you pay. Um, they're they're pretty stingy when it comes to defending. Um, so you you have to be really disciplined. Like you got to out discipline them in, on both sides of the basketball to win to win the bat to win it this game. And for the most part in playing them, I, I thought we, we did a pretty good job with disrupting. And we're going to have to do a really good job disrupting um, as well. So I don't, I think we played them in 21 and then 18, 2018, if I'm not mistaken. 14 too? Yeah. So thanks, Dave. It's our local media, they, they keep me right. <laughs> Nicole Auerbach, the athletic in the middle. Um, Don, there was obviously a big storyline in the game before yours yesterday involving a nose ring. I was wondering mm -hmm. if you were told at any point uh, yesterday about the players on your team not wearing jewelry or you know, were you alerted to anything? No, wasn't alerted to anything, but obviously our players are into social media. They saw uh, what took place. You know, it's, a, it's strange because as much as you know, during practice, you know, we were in the beginning of in the beginning of the season, we were on, you know, piercings alert. Hey, take that out. Hey, take that out. Take that out. Take that out. Don't come in here with that. Don't come in the weight room with that. I mean, I don't have any more stamina to fight that. I don't. Um, and I guess the NCAA didn't have stamina to do it during the regular season, so they got they got enough to do it now. So. You know, you got to adhere to, to the rules of, of real time. And if it cramps the player's style, um, you shouldn't have been wearing them in, in, in the first place. So I don't know. I just I – don't, I don't want any distractions for our team. I want our team to be able to just um, ride the wave that they're on if you're, you're dealt with a little bit of adversity and taking out one of your piercings. Just do it. Keep the main thing the main thing. Hey, Coach Daly, Erica Ayala with CBS Sports. Um, I want to go back to the Kool-Aid. You said y'all are sipping the Kool-Aid, not, not gulping it down. When it comes to you and the coaching staff, especially late in games, what is that balancing act of being able to give directive as a coaching staff versus making sure to keep that confidence in your team so that they can execute on the floor? Well, I mean, we we have a we have a, a coaching staff full of, you know, different emotional types. <laughs> um, I mean, Jolette's kind of calm and cool. Um, Mary is uh, um, just calm, just thoughtful. Um, Khadija is wild, like she's, she's our, our young, our, our youthful energy. Um, 
Coach Boyer is <laughs> Coach Boyer is I mean she's got stamina to talk about basketball and what's happening every single pass, not possession, a pass. If it's not perfected in the way that her vision sees it, we hear about it like and it's almost too much. Um and then I'm you know, I I just I think I meet the moment. Whatever the moment demands, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there. So I think it's a little bit of all of us, but our players have really embraced all of our personalities to the point where they know it's coming from a place of wanting us to be successful. So they don't really take us um, as – it's not stabbing their confidence. It's more of lifting them up and making sure that they're – um, adhering to the habits that we're preaching. Yes, and then we have the last one up here. Go ahead. How you doing, Coach? Sheree Nicole, Essence Magazine. Um, you guys obviously have had a phenomenal year, and I really love the balanced attack that you've had on the offensive and the defensive end, and also just the point spread. Um, thinking about this team being young and also thinking about in this tournament, every game's a new game. Um, for you, without diving too much into your playbook and giving it away, is there one facet of this team's collectiveness um, an ability that you are still waiting to see, that if you are able to see it in this tourney, will change the game for you guys. If we could put four quarters together, I, I think we'd be a, an incredible team to, um, to play against. Um, I mean, we, we, we haven't done it yet. I mean, we put a great half together. We put th three great quarters together, um, but is a testament to the talent. Like there are talented teams in our sport and there aren't very many, very many teams that can play four quarters of perfect basketball. And that's, that's what we preach as coaches. That's what we want. We don't want a letdown. Knowing that you're gonna have a letdown, it just can't be as big as, um, it will put you in the position of losing the basketball game. So um, so it, it's just that part of it, our, our ability to continue to move the ball offensively and find who should shoot, shoot it, and then to be lock and step and linked up defensively where we're communicating, we're flying all over the place, but it's, it's a, you know, it's an, a disciplined ex, you know, um, execution of our game plan. Last one, right here. Um, Michael Vopel, ESPN.com. Coach, you've played with and coached a lot of very passionate post players. The nature of that game, very physical, and, and it can get really emotional. How have you sort of worked with Camilla in terms of you want that passion, but, but not letting it be a detriment at all to her? Hmm. Um, I... I I want I want more passionate Camilla. Like I mean, yesterday I thought I thought she she put it all together on both sides of the basketball. I thought she was um, calculating. I thought she was determined. I thought she she had a we're not losing the day mentality. Um, she's not always been that. Like, she's been smiling, Camilla. She's been um, just kind of happy-go-lucky. Um, I want her to flip it. I want her to be, I want her to be, like, killer Miller. Like, I, I do. I want her to be that, and she was that for us. So, I, I mean, Camilla's growing and maturing and trying to figure things out, trying to see if, if these are her last college days. Um, you know, whether she's going to take the step and go to the other side of, of playing professional basketball. Like they all, all of our players that are, are fortunate enough to be in that deci decision-making phase, um, it, it plays on you. It, it plays on you. It really, it really does. And there's, they all go through it, one step in, one step out. And I, 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 think, she's, I think she's enjoying this team like really, really enjoying this team um, so much that I think it's her last days. 
I think. Um, but she's enjoying it so much that she probably doesn't want to let go because she's having so much fun um, with this team. So whatever she decides, we're going to be um, – I'm going to be happy for her because I know she's going to be a top pick. Um, I know that her days, her, her better days are ahead of her. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Coach. Thanks Thank you. for the time. Thank you. Shortly, we'll be joined by the student athletes. Thank you. Hey, we're joined by student athletes Sanaya Fagan and Tahina Pow Pow, and we'll open it right up for questions. Right up front. Howard Magdal at the Nats. Good to see you both. Uh, Tahina, this one's for you. You have always been an elite shooter, but you managed to hit over 47% of your threes this year. It's part of a team like a team wide trend where everyone leveled up uh, when you look at percentage across the board. What is the commonality that's allowing so many of you to become, you know, again, the best shooting three point team in the country this year? Um, just the coaches' confidence in us. Um, we know that we can play, we know we can hoop, but we just got to play as a team, and that's what we've been doing so far. And when you see one person knocking down shots, everyone's going to start knocking down shots, and it's going to be a good day when everyone knocks down shots. And it's just a confidence piece that a lot of players um, miss on different teams. So just having a, a coaching staff that believe in you and have confidence that you're going to knock it down is great to have, and I think that's the commonality between them among, amongst us. Brett Taylor, KZI9 Sports, Eugene, Oregon. Tahina, this one's for you. For three years of your career, you were very familiar with Oregon State. And of course, in your first year of transferring to South Carolina, Lord and behold, you're facing Oregon <laughs> State again. What do you recall from your time in Oregon facing the Beavers? And what's it been like, I guess, preparing in just a single day, knowing that you're about to face a former in-state rival that obviously you had a lot of experiences against? Yeah, I thought it, uh, I escaped Oregon State coming to South Carolina, but it's going to be so much fun. Um, I have a really good relationship with Scott. Um, you know, his team is, you know, very well in, um, in the Pac-12, but um, I'm very well known with them. I told the team that they're a half-court team. They they run the clock till like, um, 10 seconds within. Um, and they're just a really half-court, very methodical. They run their plays really well. and. Um, I just told him that it's going to be a half-court game and that we just got to guard everything. There's going to be a lot of ball screens tomorrow. And uh, Talia, obviously Talia is a really good point guard. She can shoot from um, deep range. And then they have Beers, who's just really strong presence in the, in the paint. So I just told him we got to lock in on defense tomorrow. And um, it's going to be a slow, methodical game. But at the same time, we got to play our game and um, just speed them up because their pace is – they're going to play at their pace and we just got to uh, speed them up. Hey guys, Talia Goodman with the next. Uh, obviously, every team that faces you guys comes in as the underdog, and they've all talked about how they use that underdog mentality as motivation. How much does hearing that over and over again motivate you guys? Uh, let's think? start with Naya. Go ahead. Um, it just pushes us. I mean, having number one, having a target on our back. I mean, just come ready to play hard. So you expect unexpected every time we play against any other team. Dahina, go ahead. Yeah, we just come into the gym um, wanting to win and wanting to get better. And 
we have learned a lot through our wins and knowing that we got to do better each and every game because everyone's going to come for us. So we come in a mentality like, hey, we got to win because it's that part of the season where it's win to go home, and I know we definitely don't want to go home. Howard Mendel, the Nets again. And I have for you, um, obviously, this is a very different team, not just in personnel, but even in the way you play this year, so much faster. I'm just wondering, just the two experiences, a little bit larger role, but just is there one you've preferred in terms of the way in which South Carolina plays? Uh, no, I mean, just come ready. I mean, I love this team. It's like our energy, it's young and stuff, but like, we just play faster. And I mean, I like playing fast, so yeah. Back here. Tina, I got one more for you. I I'm just curious, what has this first year at South Carolina meant to you? What has this journey been like, you know, transferring, you know, halfway across the country, you know, having to get acclimated to a new city, a new environment, a new team, and to obviously be here at this point undefeated and, again, just one step away from getting back to the Final Four? I'm so grateful and blessed to be able to play with South Carolina, um, and it's been uh, such a great journey so far. It's been meaning, you know, so much to me. I take a lot of pride in that. And the journey here has been so much fun. Everything has been, you know, happy and so genuine and joy to play the game again. And it's just been so fun. And I'm so blessed to have the opportunity to do that. I can't stress that enough and just how much I love this program. I love the team and I love the coaches. So I'm just really happy to come back for another year. And um, it's just been meaning so much to me and my family. Tahina, just to, to jump off of that point, um, you know, what is it about the South Carolina experience that makes it so encouraging not just to come here but to play here, to stay? And I, do you remember the moment you decided, all right, because you, you could be a first-round draft pick if you went out this year. So what was that moment that you decided, you know, look, I want to do this another year? I mean, there was a lot of moments during the season. Um, but the main thing is just the sisterhood we have. It's just a genuine love. I know we sound like a broken record when we say the word love for this team, but it's literally just a genuine love for each other and wanting to go out there and compete with each other and just play for each other. Um, it's just the love of the game, the love of the, of the team that we just want to keep winning and keep being there for each other. But it's just a genuine love to be around each other and the familyhood and the, and the sisterhood. So. You're just going to keep hearing that. Um, it's, just a, it's just so much love that I can't even uh, describe it. Thank you, student athletes. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Reminder, all our news conferences are recorded here on site by the Super staff of Hammond Communications, and they're provided via the NSA Digital Hub site. All news conferences are provided via live stream. Tip for UCLA LSU is 1.06 p.m. We will have our next press conferences after that contest. Thank you.